Hey everyone. Uh, so uh, I was asked about this, uh, and I guess, and I didn't clarify this quite well in the previous video, but uh, I hope this one helps clarify this issue, which some of you guys I think are, are having. So, uh, for example, how do we know when to use this interval notation with the union compared to maybe this notation, right? where this is kind of showing uh, an interval between two values. I'm just using any values, M and N, and A and B. We don't have to use those values, though. For example, you could say maybe negative 1 and 7, right? Uh, and how do we know when to use these two types of interval notation? Well, it all depends on what we're looking at. Sometimes, and this is specifically in regards to absolute values, and it, it all refers back to the way that this started, something like this or this, okay? So notice uh, if in the beginning or by the time, it doesn't have to be the beginning, it, it can be towards after we've solved for the absolute value, right? Kind of like we would solve for x. And there are some examples on the playlist that can, that can help you with this. Just search for those videos of absolute values with inequalities in the channel. But uh, after we've solved for the absolute value, if it's eating, if it's not eating the absolute value, like you see in this case, for example, the A, it may be 5, maybe it's a 3 or something like this. It could be a big number like 90. I don't know what value you're going to have there. But as long as that's not eating the absolute value, it's going to produce a graph like this, okay? And when the graph is like this, uh, you're going to have an interval notation that's squeezed like this. So in other words, it would look a lot like this one right here, okay? So let's say that A was 2, right? So you'd have a negative 2 and a 2 in this case, and you would have these values. Now remember, they don't have to be opposites all the time. For example, negative 2 is the opposite of 2. They can be different like this one, where you have... 1 is a negative 1, and it's 7 is not the opposite of negative 1, okay? Uh, sometimes both of them could be negative, so that could be a negative 10, and that could be a negative 7. It doesn't matter. It all depends on what is inside the absolute value, and perhaps also what is being multiplied by it, and what is being added and subtracted to it up here. These types of situations in the inequalities will produce the squeezed or the intersection of an interval. So we would have this type of notation. On the other hand, uh, and, and again, this is all depending on the, on the graph, uh, which will produce, uh, this situation will always produce a graph like this. Uh, rarely, though, you will see other unique types of situations, which we'll go over in this video. But you can see in this situation that uh, this is going to go all the way to negative infinity on the left, and it's going to stop at some value. In this case, it's negative a, which if we just said maybe that was a negative 6, and so we're just going to say that a is 6, right? Like this. Then, yeah, it, it goes to negative 6, and then we're going to, the, it's just that it's disjointed, uh, but we're going to unite that with this interval which goes from 6 all the way to the right, and that will go to infinity. Now, it doesn't matter that if there were equal parts on this, so uh, they would be shown in the originals right there like that. Okay? All that that would change is that we would use square brackets instead of these curved ones, all right? But I, but I hope you can see that if we use these brackets on the number line, that, that can help us dramatically with the way that we would write our interval notation. And we can also see from this example that we did on this one that it would produce uh, an interval notation like this. Okay, so the difference is that the inequality is eating the absolute value right here. Okay. That is the big deal that makes it so that we will have to unite the two.
Now, I don't remember if we went over this. It may have been part of uh, 2.1 or 2.2. Uh, you can find that playlist in the videos on the channel as well. However, there's a, there's a few rare situations where uh, you'll find it wants the intersection of something like this, where both of the lines go to the left. I'll make this one purple so you can see that they're different, right? So the intersection would start... Uh, it wouldn't include this point. Maybe that's 0 and this is 2, right? So the intersection, and that would be an AND statement, the intersection would go all the way to the left to negative infinity and, and end at 0 there. That would give you a different situation like this. But let's say it was an OR situation. Uh, this, if it were an OR situation, would not produce uh, an interval like this. It would, it would produce something like this, but it would also go to negative infinity. So let's look at a different example, right? Let's say that um, we have x is greater than 0 and x is greater than or equal to negative 3, right? So at 0, we've got this curve bracket that goes to the right and we'll do this one in purple at negative 3 <clears throat> it's eating the x so it also goes to the right but we're going to give this an or statement right so it needs to be one or the other notice it includes both of these so zero is included because of the purple line so in other words this one's going to go from negative 3 to infinity which is another or statement that produced uh, uh, an interval that goes to an infinity but it looks similar to this one here. Now there may be some AND statements that also produce something like this uh, and notice if this were the case if this was your graph this would give you no solution because there is no intersection between those two. Just keep that in mind as you work out these problems I don't remember that ever happening with the inequalities and the absolute values specifically. Uh, but the main thing you're going to want to look at, so right, we got this x, absolute value of x. It doesn't have to be just x. It could be x plus 3, for example. It can be less than or equal to some value a, which we can just make, it doesn't matter, 25, right? Uh, and we could solve this, and it would look something like this one here, okay? But... The problem is, is when we get a negative right there on that 25, that's a unique, unique, that is a unique situation which would produce no solutions because, uh, once again, it doesn't matter what values we have in here, positive or negative, they're going to come out positives, and there's no positive values which are less than or equal to a negative, whether it be 25 or some other negative, okay? So this one would produce no solutions. On the other hand, we may look at some other situations like this one, right? Where we have the absolute value of x. Maybe it's minus 337. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it's eating that absolute value. And we can compare it to some other value a, which we could just make a 6 because it's convenient. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, we can solve this one the same way we would on, on this one. So it would produce... A, an interval notation like this one. However, if we change this 6 to a negative, this is true for all, it doesn't matter what value of x we get. Uh, again, this is because we're comparing it to a negative. This will always be a positive, which is always going to be greater than a negative 6 or any other negative that you choose. So this one, if we looked for x, it would be all real numbers, okay? So keep that in mind as you look through these. Um, there is a few unique situations, and those videos can be found on the channel as well and in the playlist. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you do have any other questions about this, please let me know, and I'll try to clarify them the best that I can. Thanks, you guys.